operate in California, Florida, France, Japan, Euro Disney, there's all, all over the world. Um, it's amazing how many things in our daily life is the result of someone else's vision. Think about it. The cars we drive, the computers we operate, and the planes we fly are all result of someone else's vision. Helen Keller, the lady who was blind, said worse than being blind would be uh, would worse than being blind would be to be able to see but have no vision. Mm -hmm. Woodrow Wilson said, We grow great by dreams. All big men are dreamers. The poorest man is not he who is without a scent, but he who is without a dream. Mm -hmm. William Carey, the great Baptist missionary, mission, Baptist missionary, said, Attempt great things for God, expect great things from God. In 1845, the Southern Baptist Commission was constituted at First Baptist Church, Augusta, Georgia. They put this inscription on the church there to commemorate the event. Men who see the invisible, hear the inaudible, believe the incredible, and think the unthinkable. See, that is what God has called our pastor to do. That is what he has given him a vision for now. And here's what he's looking for. And I, I guarantee you, pastor leads with vision as God gives him vision. But let me tell you where he needs us to come in. He needs to lead a group of people with vision. He needs us to have vision so that he can do what God has called him to do. Can you imagine him trying to fulfill the vision all by himself? But see, what God has called, he's given vision to men, but he has called men to make it a reality. So each and every one of us have to put a mindset on this year that we are going to transform. God has already called us to it. We have to have a vision. We have to visualize where we're going to be at the end of this year. That's right. We have to visualize day by day, month by month, yes. where we're going to be. If you still see yourself in the same place at the end of this year, then you have no vision. Mm -hmm. If you still see yourself doing the same things at the end of this year, you have no vision. If you still see yourself at the same exact space, right, right. financially, health-wise, mm -hmm. all of those things require a complete and total transformation. Mm -hmm. And in order to transform, you have to have a vision. You have to see it first. Mm -hmm. See, I, I, I want to show you here through the children of Israel that Abraham, God gave him a vision. He said, go come out from among your people. Mm -hmm. And you're going to go to a land that I have given to you. Abraham was, was obedient. He saw the vision. He went, God showed him, everywhere you look, this is yours. Mm -hmm. I will give to your descendants, your inheritance. Yes. 2,000 years later, the children of Israel were at the, the precipice of walking in on the blessing that God had promised Abraham. Mm -hmm. See, I started thinking about that. I said, you know, what have our ancestors done? What prayers have they prayed? Mm -hmm. What steps have they made that we're supposed to take in and possess now? Mm -hmm. Or, let's look at it from here. What are you doing today to change the course of your children's history? Mm -hmm. To change the course of your grandchildren's history? To make sure that 2,000 years from now, should the Lord tarry, that your ancestors, your descendants, are going to walk in on the blessing that you started. You know what, Here, I started looking at that, I thought, wow, you know, God is constantly giving vision. Mm -hmm. And I believe men are failing at that vision. Mm -hmm. I believe we're failing at it because we have no faith. Mm -hmm. And we're comfortable. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we don't want to take the, the, the uh, extra step. We don't want to take the extra effort that it's going to take. Think about it. They would have probably said, if those men had been the same size as them, they would have said, hey, let's go. God has been with us thus far. But because the obstacle required more of them than they had, it required the power of God. Mm -hmm. See, you're going to face some things this year. And you better believe that if there's a vision and you're trying to transform, you have to know that the enemy's coming against you. Yeah. And you're going to face some things that you've never faced before. I want to let you know, though, if you are walking through doors unimpeded, if you're walking um, through different circumstances without any real 
um, real pushback, without any real, um, you know, without any real, you know, hindrance. If those things are coming to you, and they're going to be like, oh, I'm breezing through this year, you better check. You better check because I'm telling you, the vision of God, the enemy's always out to stop you. Right, right. And he's going to come against you. The one thing we've already talked about is that there's going to be aggravation. There's going to be impedance. There's going to be obstacles. There's going to be giants in the land. Yeah. How are you going to deal with those giants? Are you going to see yourself as a grasshopper in their eyes and in your eyes? You're already defeated. Right, right. Caleb and Joshua said, let's go. We can take this. We can do it. Right. And they knew that they could do it, not because of how great they were, but how great their God was. Amen. And this is what we have to continually keep in our mind. We are children of God. He is on our side. He is for us. He said, all things work for your good. So anything that comes against you right now, you know is there to strengthen you, to transform you, to change you. And if we continue in the same thing, if we continue running from those things, then we will never, ever transform. We will never change. But you have to understand, there will be opposition. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. There yeah. will be opposition. There will be times when you want to look and say, there's giants in the land. We can't do this. There will be times when you see yourself as a grasshopper. But I want to tell you, that's the, that's the thinking that needs to be transformed. Right. How many of us right now can say honestly that we see ourselves as God sees us? That we know that God is for us, therefore who can be against us? You may be looking for a job right now. Maybe the doors have been closed a couple times. But you have to understand that God knows what's best for you. Right. So you have to continue to fight for that. You have to continue to press for it. Right. Maybe you're right. praying for a specific position. You know what? Faith. Don't give up until you get what you've been praying for. What's the old saying? Push, pray until something happens. Right? You know, we have to get to this place where we understand that God is greater than anything that can come against yes, us. Yes. And yes. if he brought it before you, he's already made the way out for you. That's right. You just look, look at what happened with the children of Israel. They went in, they possessed that man, didn't they? Yeah. And I know a lot of people have this, this, uh, this is kind of a side note, but a lot of people have this contention. Well, why would a loving God tell them to go in there and just kill everything? Mm. Because the giants that were in the land were of the seed of Satan. You know that, right? So he was totally wiping that out. They were totally of, they were of Nephilim. That's why they were giants. So that's why he told them to go in and just totally, just kill everything, don't leave anything. Men, women, children, cattle, everything. And it had all been defiled. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? So he says, we know that a vision has to be conceived in the revelation from God. So we know that we have to make sure that we are consulting God, that we are seeking him for his revelation for us. Um, and you know, one, one thing that we have to stop doing, and I think this gets us as Christians more than anything, we have to stop doubting. We have to stop doubting. You have to seek God. If you put something in your heart, then you run with it as fast and as furious Amen. as you can Amen. until he says, go a different direction. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Until he says, that door is, is closed now. Go this way. Right. Don't doubt. Oh, God, did, did you give me this? God, should I do this? Oh, uh, is that of you? You know what? That's why you got to know the word for yourself because Amen. I guarantee you, he's not going to give you anything that contradicts his word. Right. And if you have something that doesn't contradict his word, I implore you to go full force because there's a time right now, and I think in, in, in Christianity, where we are perishing for lack of vision. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's why you see the defeat that you see so much of Christian values, of, of the things of God, of the things that um, honor God. And our world is becoming so, so dark, mm -hmm. so much more... Uh, a, a, a loving evil, uh, loving, yeah, loving evil and calling good evil. As how does that go? Calling evil good and good evil? We're seeing that right now. That's a whole other message, but we're seeing that right now. Now, we can't doubt, because if you doubt, you're already defeated. But God is saying we have nothing to fear. If he's given it to us, we can go forward. We have nothing to fear. Now, you know, we know that... Um, that the people, I said the people perish for lack of knowledge, and even in the King James, 
it actually said, instead of um, lack of vision, it says revelation. The New King James says revelation for lack of revelation. You know, how many of you really feel like you're receiving revelation from God? You know, if you don't feel like you're getting revelation knowledge from God, then it's time to seek Him for that. Yes. Amen? Yes. It's time to seek yes. Him for that. Yes. Now, the second thing, a vision is continued in examination. Now, look at um, verses 1 and 2. And look at God. Had, uh, Moses had sent them up to scout out the land, to examine the land, right? Mm -hmm. They were not to spy out the land um, uh, for criticism, but to give an opinion and to come up with a strategy. See, I love that because as they went to, in one and two, they went to spy out, Moses said, go spy out the land, but he already knew what they were gonna face. He said, be of good courage. I think he said, be of good courage because he knew that what was in the land. But he said, I want you to come back to me, not with criticism, not with defeat, but with a strategy. Yeah, there's walls, but if we go this way or that way, we can take those walls down. Yeah, there's fortified cities, but if we do this or do that, we can take those down. That's why he sent them to spy out the land. Mm -hmm. Not to come back and go, oh, we can't do it. Mm -hmm. Because they already knew it was the promised land. They already knew Moses was the deliverer. God already told them, I'm taking them from Egypt into the promised land. And in his faith and in his understanding, he already knew God has delivered this to us. So I'm not going in, I'm not asking you to go see why we can't do it. I want you to go in and see how we can do it. It was a military strategy yeah. spying out. It was not for them to come back and criticize. Mm -hmm. They were not um, looking for the will of God. They already had the will of God. They knew the will was to take the land. It had already been promised to them. Right. <clears throat> they were to see what the land was like what the people or the cities were like, what their homes were like. They were to find the facts out, and that's it. They were to fortify their faith. In so doing, he said, be of good courage. Why did God um, want them to spy out the land when he knew they would find out that there were giants in the land? The cities had walls around them, and that, you know, like I said, Jericho was one of the strongest cities. And the giants were in the land because God wanted them to see that they had a God-sized vision and they could only conquer through the power of a mighty God. Amen. See, when you can do something on your own, guess what? You don't need God. Mm -hmm. But if you have a, if God gives you a God-sized vision, it's because he wants you to know that the only way you're going to get there is with his might and his power. Yeah. Total reliance on God. Amen? Amen? They were to fortify their faith. Numbers 3 said they were to face the foe. So if vision calls for examination, if you have a God-sized vision, there will be challenges ahead. Number 3, a vision will cause aggravation. We talked a little bit about that too. Um, the ten spies and the aggravation in the camp. There was aggravation in the camp. They wanted to stone Joshua and Caleb. Mm -hmm. Now, remember what happened here is that God waited for that whole generation to die out. That's right. Forty years later, they didn't get the promise. Mm -hmm. But God said, without a vision, those that didn't have a vision and all those that followed those ten spies. God allowed them to die in the wilderness, and he waited for a whole new generation to come up to fulfill his promise to, his, to the promise he had made to the children of Israel. You know, I'm, I'm telling you, some people, we got to look at this. Sometimes we got to look at this and say, Lord, I don't want the vision to die with me. Right. I don't want the next generation to have to come up and do what you called me to do. Amen. And I don't want the next generation to have to come through and go through what I've gone through. You're already, you're stopping this right now with me. I just have to fortify my faith. I have to make sure that I am lined up with your vision and that I have the faith that it takes to go forward because the next generation coming behind is, is counting on us. Right. Mm. They're counting on us to change some things. And some of us are going, well, you know what? My, my mother was an alcoholic. My great-grandmother was an alcoholic. Her mother before her was an alcoholic. So therefore, I'm an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. 
But God is saying, no, that doesn't have to continue. Somebody has to change it for the next generation. Somebody has to make sure that the next generation is taken care of. You know what? It starts right here with us. Why? Because it's our year of transformation. So the transformation is going to begin right here. We're going to start with the vision, and we're going to transform through that vision. But I want to prepare. I want us to prepare. I don't want us to just say, oh, it's our year of transformation and think that that's, you know, like I said, a tagline or some kind of uh, a little adage. You know, this is a life-changing event. That's the vision God has given our pastor. And you know what? It's going to take the mighty, mighty hand of God to make it happen. But he has given this to Faith Fellowship Christian Center. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if he brought it to you, he's going to bring you through it. But now you all need to jump on board. We all have to jump on board. That's right, that's right. We all have to begin now to say, God, okay, if we're transforming, show us how we need to transform. Show me those things I need to leave behind. Mm -hmm. Show me those things I don't need to look like next year. Amen. Show me those things I don't need to be doing next year. Right. Show me those things I don't need to be saying next year. Show me that next year how my, my life is going to look totally different next year. That when we look at each other next year, we should see something totally different yeah. than we've right. ever seen before. Right. It may take yeah. all year. It right. may not. God, I don't know what the, what the time frame is for us, but what we do know is God has started it right now. Yes. And he's saying, Faith Fellowship, it's your time. Yes. It's your time to change. Mm -hmm. It's your time to metamorphosize, if you will. Mm -hmm. It's your time to not be the things you were before. Mm -hmm. And I, I just would admonish every one of us to just begin to pray and ask God, start with me, what, what's the first thing you want me to change? What's the first thing you want me to get rid of? Maybe it's my tongue. Maybe I need to really watch my tongue. Right. You know, maybe it's my attitude. Maybe I really need to check my attitude at the door. You know what? Maybe I'm just a little lazy. And I just, for some reason, I'm just wasting time, precious time that God has given me. You know what? Maybe I have a lot of doubt in my heart. Maybe I don't think I can ever do any more than I've done. But, you know, my, I'm, I'm doing better than any generation I've ever, um, you know, in, in my family. So I must be okay. You know, maybe God is asking you to go way deeper than that. Maybe God is calling you for some serious transformation. But like I said, your family should not look the same. Right, right. Shouldn't look like the last generation. Right. Shouldn't look like it did the last year. Everything needs to transform. Everything needs to change. So that's what he's calling us to do. You know, one of the things I want to tell you, too, when we talk about the fact that, you know, we're looking for an examination and aggravation. Um, this is the one we're talking about right now, the aggravation. I want you to understand that we look at things a lot of times and we'll say, okay, how many people you know, want to do this and how many people want to do that? Mm -hmm. I want you to know that in the Bible, almost every time the majority is wrong. That's right. The majority said crucify Christ. Mm -hmm. The majority said here, no, we can't do it. Ten came back and said no. Two came back and said yes. So when we go through this year, I'm talking about a mindset change. When we go through this year, and pastor's called to do some things, because it's about transformation, I truly believe God's going to hold us on the carpet for that. When pastor's called to do something, and we all may be sitting back going, I oh, don't know, well, there's 12, 20 of us that say no. Pastor's going yes. Somebody needs to understand, get behind. Because... The majority in the Bible is never right. Go back and read it for yourself. It's never been, God has never worked through the majority. He's always worked through right. the few. Mm -hmm. So if everybody over here thinks it's wrong and two people over here think it's right, we all need to be getting pray, pray up and, and check and see what God, if it lines up with the Word of God. And if it lines up with the Word of God, get behind it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Amen. They even said in there that the majority had even um, elected the wrong uh, disciple after Christ was ascended. The majority, they said, they were always wrong. The, the minority was right. Um, <clears throat> when you have a um, vision of God, there will be aggravation in the congregation. What's the difference in these two opinions, two people who say we are, um, we are able, they are bred for us, God will give us um, victory, he has already given us promise, um, and ten who said we are unable. 
The difference was vision. The difference is winning, the difference in winning and losing is vision. The difference in progress and going backward is vision. Vision is what causes everything to take place. We won't win without vision. We won't change without vision. And some of you need to really start thinking, what do I see Faith Fellowship looking like? God, show me what you see it looking like next year. I'll tell you one of the things that you put on my heart. I see this, this baptismal pool being busy. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Busy. Mm -hmm. Daily. If not daily, weekly. Mm -hmm. That's transformation, church. Amen. Amen. That's transformation. That's the vision. I see us being the people that are about evangelism, vision, out there winning souls for Christ, not filling up the pews with people coming by letter, if you will, from church to church, right, right. but with people that have never set foot in the church before, Amen. people that have been in the church but coming here for the first time yes. to be saved because they want to hear about the gospel, they want to hear about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We can't even have one that room. Vision. That's not something we can do on our own. That's not something you can do by yourself. That requires God-given ability. It requires the mighty hand of God. Amen? Amen? See, one group saw opportunity, the other obstacles. One group saw grapes, the other saw giants. One saw blessings, the other saw burdens. Um, Get some vision. The best church is yet to be built. The best ideas are yet to be had. The best sermons are yet to be preached. The best songs are yet to be sung. Think about what God can do through you for Jesus Christ. Now remember, the God-given vision, God gives the vision, he gives the ability, but he requires man to make it a reality. I'm going to say that again. God has the vision. He gives us the vision. He gives us the ability, but he requires you to make it a reality. He uses men to make it a reality. It will not come to pass if we don't get behind it. It has to be manifested through us. Amen? Amen. That's what God's plan is for the vision to be manifested, just like here with the children of Israel. God said, I've given the, the promised land to you. It's yours. I promised it to Abraham 2,000 years ago. I am now allowing you guys, this generation, to walk through. In 40 more years, they had to die off. My study said that Moses and Caleb and, and um, Joshua watched daily. Right, right. 200,000 funerals a day. People died off. Died off. And when that whole generation was gone, 40 years later, I love what Caleb said. Who would say that? Caleb said, I'm stronger now. I'm, I'm as strong now as I was then. Right. He was 40 then. Now he's 80. Mm -hmm. How many of us can say that? Mm -hmm. I was I'm strong, I'm stronger now as I was then. I'm ready to go and take the land. Give me this mountain, he said. Yeah. See, that's the mindset. That's the transformation that has to happen. You know, there's some great things that I believe we're going to do here at Faith Fellowship Christian Center. There's some great things, some big things that I believe God is calling us to. And it's going to require all of us to transform our thinking, to transform our motives, to transform the things that have held us back in a way, if you will. And I'm not sure that we've been held back, but I'm talking individually now. There are things in our individual lives that are holding us back. Holding us back from being all that we can be, all that God has called us to be, because we don't see the vision of God. We don't see anything more than today or tomorrow. We don't, maybe we don't even see tomorrow. But I, I, would, I just want to say, let's, let's start looking. You know, what God gives us, you know, two hours from now, let's just start looking down the future. And I believe that God has allowed us to have a curiosity, a, a, a focus on the future for good. The enemy came in and tried to make it all bad. Yes. He came in with, with psychics and, and uh, tarot cards and all kinds of stuff to, to, to capitalize on what God gave us as a curiosity to see the future. 
Well, God is saying, visualize it. Give it a vision. Show what you want it to look like. Know that God is with you. Know that he has given it to you. Know that it is yours. And then take it by force. Because you're going to come against some things. A vision will always create transformation. Yes. Joshua 3 and 17. Because there was a vision, because they stood on the revelation and the promise of God and did not doubt, they were not only victorious, but they were changed. People, God has already given it to us. So if God has given you something, like I said right now, just think, if God has given you good health, but he says you've got to pass the giant to possess it. If God has given you financial freedom, maybe a total change in the life of your family, but yet you've got to face the giant to possess it. See, I guarantee you, you're not going to face that giant the way you are now. It's going to require you to do some changing. Because if, it, if you could face it, if you could handle it the way you are now, you would have already done it. But God is going to do some change in you. He's going to allow you to transform through the vision. You already see it. God has already showed you. Yes, my family will be well off. Yes, my family will be healthy. Yes, generations to come will be changed. There will be no alcoholism in my family anymore. There will be no more drugs in my family anymore. There will be no more prostitution in my family anymore. There will be no more of these things because today I'm going to change. I'm going to possess the promise God has already given to me. I'm not going to continue to stay the same. Because if I stay the same, I won't be able to go. But I'm going to allow God to transform my thinking. And I'm going to see it as God sees it. And I'm going to know that God is with me. And i got the deed in my pocket right now. For all that God has promised me. I don't have to fear any man. It belongs to me. Financial freedom belongs to me. Health belongs to me. Sound mind belongs to me. These are the things that God has already promised us. He said, I haven't given you a spirit of fear. What are we afraid of? Right. But one of love and of sound mind. Mm. That's the spirit that we're to go out and possess the land in. Yeah. That's the spirit we're to go out and to tackle and to defeat the giants in our life. Yeah. Everybody has giants in their life. Yeah. Yeah. I promise you. This used to be one of mine. You guys know this one. But God transforms. Gets to the place now where I, uh, I, I, don't, I don't see myself doing anything else but teaching the word of God. That's, yeah. I mean, I love it. I live for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a transformation. Mm-hmm. It's a change. I didn't see that vision. But let me tell you something. I will tell you this. God gave me a vision. He showed me the vision, and I was in on the stage in the pulpit, and there were tens of thousands of people. I don't know when it comes to pass, but I'll know one thing: I'm transforming. I'm transforming because there was a time in my life you wouldn't even get me up here. There was a time in my life you guys know it. Some of you have got to experience it that I would quiver and shake at the very just being. That was the fear that had gripped me and held me in bondage for so long. And now I have learned, first of all, it's not about me. It has nothing to do with me. All I need to do is fully rely on God. The Holy Spirit does the rest. He's calling each and every one of us to that. That's the transformation that's going to take place here at Faith Fellowship. Yeah. We're going to be a people that are bold and go boldly for Christ. We're going to be different than we were last year or ever before. But I'll tell you one thing. I truly, truly believe this, and I am asking you to seek God, pray fast, and allow him to show you the vision he has for you. And then go boldly, go full force. Don't let it stop you. Be like Caleb and Joshua. Don't let it stop you. And you may be the only two. And trust me, there's going to be a thousand people around you saying you're crazy. That's not the way to do that. But remember, when that happens to you, the majority is never right. 
Biblically speaking, that's what we're talking about spiritually here. The majority was never right. God used the few. If that were the case, we could go into a whole other thing. If that were the case, the, we, we, the, the, the Sadducees and the um, Pharisees and all of them would have been right. Mm -hmm. They weren't. So I'm going to tell you right now, whatever vision God has given you, don't let the naysayers stop you. Don't let them become the giants in your life. Right. And you know what? I don't care who that is. Right, right. I don't care if it's your husband, your wife, your children, your, your sisters, your brothers. I don't care if it's one of your brothers or sisters in Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, at some point you have to go, you know what? I have to listen to what God has given me until God says no to another person. The problem is a lot of us don't even know the voice of God. Mm -hmm. you got to begin to seek him. Yes. Yes. you got to seek him to know his voice, to know that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt mm -hmm. what he has called you to do. Amen. But remember, and I just want to pray, my prayer is today that each and every one of you will walk out of here today knowing that God has a vision for you and he wants to give it to you. Amen. If you don't have a vision of what you're supposed to do right now, or where you're supposed to be, or how you're supposed to change mm -hmm. this world, but I guarantee you he has one for you. You will change this world in some way, shape, or form. You will affect the kingdom of darkness. And that's why your giants are in the land right now. To stop you from doing that. Right, right. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> Who they were was changed forever. And as the Israelites entered into their own land, remember they had been wandering for years. Right. And now they have their own. They were slaves for 400 years. Yes. You don't think that when they walked into their promised land that their whole lives were changed forever? Now they own their own land that God had promised to them. Yes. See, that's, what's happened. that's why the enemy doesn't want to see any of us walk into that promise. Because he knows when you walk into that promise, it changes. Right. When you walk into that promise that God has for you, it changes your whole vision, your whole outlook. And nobody, nobody can tell you any different. Those children of Israel that possessed the land, you couldn't tell them it wasn't theirs, could you? Nobody came in and took them out of it at that point. That's why we have to be so strong to understand that God is God, and what God has for us is for us. And what we need to do is be mindful that we must possess it. They were no longer people without a home, but rather God transformed them into a land of blessing and abundance. Yes. How many of you could use that blessing right now? Yeah. Raise your hands as high as you can. Yeah. <laughs> amen, amen. A land flowing with milk and honey. That's what God wants for you. That's what God has for for faith fellowship, that is what we are going to transform into. Yes. A bold and powerful people. Mm -hmm. Not a people that are lacking the power of God in their lives. But a powerful, uh, a God, how do I want to say it? A, a, a God filled, the Holy Spirit filled, powerful people mm -hmm. that are willing to conquer anything. Mm -hmm. That are willing to take on whatever challenge may come their way. Yes that are willing to go boldly in the name of Christ, knowing that whatever we do is lined up with the word of God, and we should, we don't have to fear, we don't have to worry, for God is for us, and if God is for you, then who can be against you? Amen? Amen. So we want you to, to receive the fact that we must transform in this year 2017 through the vision that God has given our pastor and each of us individually. And begin to walk in that vision. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, I just truly thank you for your message today. Lord God, I thank you for your word today, Father God. I am truly excited, Father God, to see what you are about to do here at Faith Fellowship Christian Center. I am excited, Lord God, to see what you're about to do in my life and in the life of my brothers and sisters, Father God. I truly want to look at 2018, should you tarry, Father. Should the Lord tarry and yes, we yes, see yes. 2018, yes. I want to see a completely different people here, Lord God. Yes. A completely transformed yes. people, yes. Father God. 
people with a vision, Father yes. God, and people yes. that have your vision, that know, yes. Father God, that there will be aggravation, there will be examination, Father God, but, but once all that's done, there will be transformation, Father. So, Father, we give you glory right now, and we bless your holy name, yes. Father God, for yes. you, and you alone are worthy. And, Father, we just ask right now yes. that you go yes. with us wherever yes. we go, that you be our foreguard and our rear guard, Lord, Lord, and that you allow us, Father God, to walk in your will and your will only, yes. not yes. our own will, Father God. Father, we ask right now that you crucify our will, Lord yes. God. Yes. Lay us down and stand in us, Lord God, for it's not about what we want, but about what you want. But Father, yes. I pray right now that your people begin to seek you, Lord yes. God, to yes. seek your face, not just yes. your hand, Lord God, yes. but your yes. face, Lord God, that you would allow them to know what the vision you yes. have given them, Father God. One, that they can fulfill, Lord God. One that they are able to do, Lord God. One that you will give them the mighty power to do what you have called them to do. So, Father, I ask right now that we become a bold people, Lord God. A people, Father God, that are unwavering and not doubting, Lord God. And Father, I thank you right now because I consider it already done. We know that you've already looked it over and it's already taken care of. And we just thank you right now in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. amen.